Welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. In this video, I want to go over the document settings and creating a new document uh, and setting it up for your purposes, uh, whether that's to create a user interface like an app design, a web page, whether you want to print a poster or a birthday invitation or design a t-shirt or whatever you want to do. I'm going to show you how to set up the document accordingly. And then we're also going to be exporting. Uh, so we'll, I'll show you how to export out and different ways that we can export in different formats that will be great to achieve your goals. <laughs> so to start with, let's click on File and go to Document Properties. So by default, we have this uh, nice A4 page, which is 210 mil millimeters by 297 millimeters. And then when you go to Document Properties, the first thing, it has your display units. By default, it's millimeters. If you're designing something for print, and you're in Europe, you'll want to do millimeters. If you're in USA, you'll want to do inches. That's if you're designing print. If you're designing something that's just only going to exist on a computer monitor, like in a video, or if you're doing like an animation or a web page, you're going to want to do PX. You're going to want to be designing in pixels. So it just depends. First, let's do, um, we'll just, we'll, okay, we'll do pixels first. So let's say you want to do pixels. So pixels, you're never going to want to do an A4 in pixels because A4 is a paper size. So in pixels, you're going to want to do, you'll come down here to custom size and you'll probably want to do something like 1920 by 1080. Uh, oh, and what I forgot to do was, so this general settings, this shows us that the this will change our measurement here for pixels and it'll show all of our global measurements for pixels. pixels. Um, but under this custom size, we have a, a different way to control our units as well. So we want to change this to pixels also. So you'll want, you'll want to make sure that these always match. Um, and so now we want our width to be 1920 by 1080. So there we have it. So this now, our display region, if I hit the plus sign and zoom in, this box is the size of a standard computer monitor or a standard HD TV. It's 1080p, 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels tall. So if we're designing something for like an HD TV, you wanna have an animation or just a picture or a desktop background like a wallpaper for your desktop, this is the, a great design, a great layout to have. Um, we can change the background. So by default, it's a white background. But if we check this, we can have a checkered background. And then we can see, kind of gives you a better idea, um, especially if you're not printing on white paper. It gives you an idea of how things will look. Because then you know, oh, I see. So now you can draw a white object, and it won't, especially if there's no uh, stroke. Like if we just make, or if we make our stroke white. Uh, and I guess that wasn't pure white. But so now we can actually draw white objects without it getting lost in the background. If this isn't checked, then it becomes lost. So you might sometimes want to want to have that be a, a transparent background like this. Um, let's see. That's about it. Yeah, we, you can change. Yeah, that's about all, all that we'll want to do. And then if you hit this button here, uh, it just like shrinks the dock over here. So it's still open. And a lot of times I show that because sometimes while that shrunk, if you want to get back into it, and if, if you go to File and go back into Document Properties, nothing happens. It doesn't. It doesn't bring that window up, and it can be confusing. That's because it's docked to the side over here. So if ever you dock this, it'll still appear here, and any other options that we bring up can be docked as well. If we hit the X, it'll just close it, and then we can bring it back up by going into our Document Properties. Okay. Um, let's try another one. So if we go to File, New, it actually brings up a whole brand new window. And it just has this in A4. For some reason, I've got Find and Replace up by default and my Fill and Stroke. So I can dock both of these. And now they just appear over here. I can bring up whichever one I want to. Uh, but I want to change this from A4 to something else. So I go to File, Document Properties. It will bring that up. And this time I do want to print something in the USA. So my display units, I want to be in inches. And my units for my, well, I'm not going to set a custom size. Okay, maybe I am going to do custom size. I lied. So I'll go down to custom size, and I'll do width. I'll do 36 inches by 36 inches. So what that's going to do is create kind of a poster. 36 inches by 36 inches. It's a completely square poster. Maybe my local printer has a nice 
foam board or something that I want to print to, and that's the dimension of the of the board. So I can design something on here. Maybe I'll have like a, I want to say yard sale. And I want to have like a design, like a nice big banner for my yard sale and have like all kinds of stars and different fun things. So I would design this and then I would have it printed at my local printer. This is 36 by 36. Um, something too, can, do, can we see DPI here? I guess we can't. So if you're if you've done anything with printing, you know there's a setting called DPI, which is like dots per inch, or sometimes it's called like PPI, pixels per inch. Uh, I think there's one. I think that exists. So we'll see that in a second. In fact, I guess we'll just do it now. So let's say we want to actually print this. If we click this checkered background, we see okay. So this is actually printing on whatever. So whatever color the maybe it's a yellow poster board. So it'll print on whatever color it is, and no other color will be printed. Whereas if we did draw an actual square and color it white and then rate and then lower it to the bottom, we see this is what it looks like. So it's actually sometimes printers can print a white color. A good example would be maybe you're printing this on the back of a shirt, like a black shirt. Well, if you print black ink on the back of a black shirt, it's not going to show up. So you might actually want to print a white color on the back of the shirt and then a red star and black text. So sometimes you will want to actually draw white. So just keep that in mind if you if you're designing on a transparent background, or if you're actually printing color. In this case, I'm assuming I'm going to print a 36 by 36 on like a white foam board. So I don't need to I don't need to draw a white color in. Uh, let's let's export this as if we were going to send this to the printer. So to do that, we go to File. If we go to save, it'll save our document, which is a good idea to do too. It'll save it as a .svg file. Sometimes the printers, um, professional printers, will actually want to have the SVG file. So sometimes it's a good idea to send both. So, so I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to click uh, save, and we'll just go to the desktop, and we'll call this yard.svg. So yard, and then it's saved as an Inkscape SVG. We can also save it as a plain SVG, maybe if we're worried about compatibility issues. Uh, with the printer. And then they can actually open this up in Illustrator or they can open it up in um, you can maybe even open these up in like GIMP and Photoshop, I'm not sure. But lots of programs, their, their printing software can probably open vector art. It can open .svg files. So we could send this and then that way they when the printer opens it up they might be like, oh you know what, your star for whatever reason was off the border so I'll fix it for you. So they're like, they can drag it over and move it without having to get crazy. Because um, the other way we export it is as a, as like maybe a PNG image. So we go to File and go Export PNG Image. That'll bring up some more options towards the right here. Um, so this one will be called yard.png is what it is by default. It's on my desktop, which is great. If I want to put it somewhere else, I can change the location by clicking this Export As. And then the Export button is what will export it. So if I just leave everything how it is now, well, okay, so our export area, by default, it's drawing. So if I hit export, let's just see what that looks like. So we minimize, uh, we'll close out of this one we did earlier. So now we see it exported out. It doesn't look too bad. We have a, a white border on our star, which I didn't realize we had. And then we have our just black text. So that's what it'll look like. Um, but it's important to know what this is doing. So let's say we have our star selected. And now when, when we go to export, like automatically it changed this to selection. So now if I if I hit export and we minimize, now it only exported the star. It only exported what was selected. So now we have this thing that says yard cell, we have this thing that's just the star. So do you see what I did there? If I just if I just click this text and I go to selection and export, it'll just export whatever is selected. And if I hit control if I um, shift and click the star and select both of them, I can export both of them. But it's going to export. So I have just the text there. I can export just both of them together. Uh, replace it. Sure. We'll replace this one. Um, so now we have two different ones, but they're different. One of them is just the selection. Um, in fact, both of these actually these are the same because it the, did the drawing. But what I really want to do, let's, I'll show you for an extreme example. Let's shrink this down to the middle. If we export page, that's almost always what you're going to want to do if you're doing things properly. 
when you export the page, it exports the page, these lines, the page area. So now if I hit export, it'll export the entire page lines and anything inside them. So now our poster looks like this. Um, even that's kind of hard to see. Let's open it up in, uh, we'll open it up in GIMP so we can kind of see exactly what it looks like. It'll have a transparent background and just that text and that star. So this is what our poster will look like when it's printed, but it'll have white in the back instead. Uh, am I making sense here for you? So if we do just drawing, I think just drawing is going to be basically the limits of just the drawing. So we'll call this yard, I'll call it yard one, and we'll go to export. And it's a good idea for you to do just what I'm doing now and playing around. So yard one looks like this. It's just the limits of the drawing. So it exports every drawn ob every object it can find. I'm going to close that. Every object it can find, it's just going to it's going to basically export this dotted line around it. If this star were over here, it would it would export just this shape, and it wouldn't do the page borders. So pay close attention to that. That can kind of throw a lot of people off because you know you might actually accidentally have just this selected, and you export it and you forget to double check it, and then you upload that file to the printer. You upload this and say, hey, can you print this yard sale poster? And they just print this. And it's not 36 by 36 inches, it's not the right size you wanted, and it just won't turn out so well. So play with all these. Play with page, drawing, selection, custom. You can actually change these numbers and export it. You know, Choose your X and Y, so you could actually export an object sitting clear over here outside of the page border, but you could customly tell it to go to that point, that X and Y point, if you wanted to. You probably don't want to. Uh, okay, and then what I was going to say too is, if you're printing, always you'll want this to be your pixels at, your DPI. 96 is good for web, but if you're printing something, you want to be at least 150, and I like to do 300 actually. So I change this to 300. Uh, and what that does is makes a much larger file size. So if I go to page, and then I and then I change this to 300, and then I go to export. This is going to be. It takes a lot longer. If you notice, whoa, it's taking forever because it's 36 inches by 36 inches. It's quite large. It's a lot of information. So it, this exports out. Uh, which one? What did I call that? Is it this one here? Yeah, I think it is. So it's taking a little bit longer to load because it's such a large file, but it still looks the same. But if we go to properties, we see this file's, um, well, it's not huge, 628 kilobytes. Uh, properties of this one, 96. So I guess it's not huge, but it took a long time to render uh, because we have it at 300 DPI. So anytime you're printing something, whether it's on a t-shirt, business card, poster, even a, a printer page, like on a regular printer at home, you want this to be 300 DPI. It just gives you better resolution. That's for every inch that you're printing, it has 300 dots instead of the default was 96 dots. So it's going to be three times as detailed, basically. If you're doing web, it doesn't really matter because web 96 is, is plenty fine for a, a computer monitor, computer screen, but just know that printers can print at a higher resolution. Uh, usually. And then you can ex export the width and the height too, so this is going to be uniform because we're 36 by 36. What else? That's about it with the export settings. So this video is getting kind of long, but hopefully that's, you know, shed some light on that, on how to create uh, different document sizes, different settings, and then exporting so that you get the result that you're wanting. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you on the next video.